to a place of worship is complete without the classic temple offerings to please and propitiate the gods. It's estimated that around 800 million tons of flowers are offered at temples, dargahs and in gurudwaras across the country. But the next day when these offerings are cleaned up, they turn to waste and become a massive problem for the environment. Since flowers in temples are considered sacred, they aren't dumped in landfills. They are instead typically disposed of in ponds, lakes and rivers, posing a threat to water quality and marine life. While industrial waste has a huge role to play in polluting our water bodies, floral waste isn't too far behind. As per research by Pradeep Kumar Mehdi, roughly 8 million tons of floral waste is dumped into water bodies and rivers in India every year, choking and polluting them. But some brands and individuals have now taken the responsibility of turning temple waste into gold. One of them is Jigisha Shukla from Vadodra, running a sustainable clothing brand called Bagia. Bagia not only promotes handwork and crafts, but also gives a purpose to floral waste in their second life as natural dyes that bring colour and texture to their line of sustainable clothing. So Bagia uh, came, it's a natural extension, like I have been practicing sustainability uh, living since I understood the meaning of uh, living coexist living in sync with the nature and that's how I thought of working with uh, crafts but then I thought that let's create something which is entirely biodegradable and entirely in sync with nature so that's how Bagya came into existence where we work with weavers across India so we procure fabrics from weavers across India and then we, we do the printing with temple flowers and herbs. Jigisha and her team collect floral waste from nearby temples. They often get floral waste from weddings as well. The flowers go through extensive treatment before they are applied to fabric. The process includes around 15 steps and the fabric that will eventually be dyed is procured from weavers who work with organic cotton, tassa silk and chanderi silk. <laughs> We collect temple flowers, used temple flowers to create prints. So we work with temple flowers and herbs to create those prints. So when it comes to temple flowers, we, uh, we use rose, roses, marigold and we also use, when it comes to leaves, we use uh, amrut ki patti and all of those. And with the herbs, we use indigo, walnut, katha and all of those. Once we have procured the fabric, we process the fabric. So there are like, uh, there is a scouring where we wash the fabric so that the impurities of the fabrics are gone. Then we do the modenting process so that the fabric gets ready to take up the dye. So modenting is usually done with aloe vera or fit curry, alum. And then we lay the fabric, we create the pattern on the fabric, uh, however we want. Uh, and then the fabric is rolled and then it's steamed and then we do the post modenting processes again with alum, aloe vera and salt and that's the final product. Apart from being biodegradable and organic, the floral dye has other advantages too. This dye isn't just good for the environment but also for the mind, body and soul. Uh, like in Ayurvastra, Ayurvastra is a branch of science, it's a branch of the clothing science. So it is said that you know when you wear something which is naturally dyed with herbs and with flowers and uh, if the garment is cut, it's, it's an organic fabric then it actually rejuvenates your body, it imparts therapeutic properties to your body. So when you wear something which is chemically dyed you or of, of, of a synthetic fabric, you would often have seen that it makes you very uncomfortable. If there is a harsh sun, you would feel that you know, you would, uh, it, it, it will make you very uncomfortable. But, but when it comes to the natural dyes, they have this innate property of it makes you warm in winters and cool in summer. So that's the beauty of the natural dyed and that's the beauty of the khadi fabric. When it comes to the natural dyeing, the extract or which is left like you know they can be used to make compost 
और एंड वेन इट कम्स टू द केमिकल डाइंग वॉट एवर एक्सट्रैक्ट वॉट एवर लेफ्ट ओवर इज देर इट एक्चुअली रिड्यूस द फर्टिलिटी ऑफ दी सॉइल Every business comes with a challenge and the biggest challenge for Jigisha was to convince the priests at the temple to give her the floral waste but she knew just what to do to convince them I took couple of the garments to the different temples and then I show, showed them that you know this is how marigold looks on the fabric this is how roses looks on the fabric so they were quite supportive and we even created some of the outfits for the gods like uh, wherever i have taken the temple flowers i have created something for the god like you know ganesh ji ke liye kuch bana hua hai shiv ji ke liye kuch bana hua hai parvati ji ke liye matlab like i have created some of them and that's how they got to know about the entire process though eco printing has been practiced in india for a very long time some artisans are still new to this concept training the artisans is another challenge faced by jigisha so with the eco printing you don't get the artisans who are like you know who have been practicing that art form since generation so when we talk about ajraks or when we talk about block printing or when we talk about bandni those tie and dye you have the artisans whose generations have been into this craft so you can procure them or you can tell them the design and they can make it for you but here you have to train uh, normal women into this art form you have to explain them that you know they are basically artisans they are not the laborers so that that that's a major challenge which have been facing till now Bagia is not only turning waste into a resource but the process followed for dyeing a piece of cloth is also eco-friendly. The water is used to wash utensils or mop the floor before it's discarded. The chemicals in the water are within permissible limits and hence don't pollute the groundwater. When we work with the flowers and herbs we are actually working with the raw material which is actually a wastage for some right we are collecting temple flowers we are not uh, buying another resource we are collecting them so then we uh, do the printing again on the hand woven or the hand crafted uh, uh, hand crafted machine which generates employment for millions of the weavers and which uses less energy for its production so there you actually save on the energy and the third part where you do the steaming we make sure that we have enough bundles to steam we don't steam like you know 6 meters or 10 meters we make sure that you know we have specific quantity when it goes to the steaming and whatever leftover is there uh, we use it to create compost compost like you know it's used for again for fertilizers in farms Sustainability comes naturally to Jigisha. She always saw her father avoid the waste of resources. She believes it's the small contributions that matter. I remember my dad is like very finicky about his polythene bag. वो बड़े बैग में छोटा इतना छोटा सामान नहीं रखेंगे या छोटा कचरा नहीं फेंकेंगे यू वुड बी लाइक के कचरा फेंकते रहो फेंकते रहो फिर उसको डम करेंगे लाइक यू नो अस वेरी स्मॉल एग्जांपल एंड ही इज वेरी अगेन वेरी फिनिकी अबाउट के टैप ओपन नहीं एंड अगर किसी का भी टैप ओपन होगा तो वो बहुत गुस्सा करेंगे कि पानी क्यों वेस्ट कर रहे हो एंड ऑल ऑफ दो थिंग सो बगैर इज अ वेरी नेचुरल एक्सटेंशन फॉर मी आई लव क्राफ्ट and so i thought of bagya where i can create a craft like i i can work with the weavers across india and then i can do the natural uh, dyeing and create a complete sustainable product by reusing floral water and giving opportunities to local artisans jigisha and her brand bagya are creating clothes with a conscience we need to realize that and also textile industry is the second most polluting sector of the entire world so as a citizens of the world we need to be really careful of what we are offering to the next generation even if you think twice before buying the another outfit that's actually a commendable
Another group putting temple waste to good use are the students of Aryabhat College in Delhi University. Members of the college club in Actis Aryabhat, these students run several community-based projects, one of which is Project Palash. The project started in 2019 with a vision to safeguard life underwater by tackling the problem of poor waste management in urban temples. The whole idea behind it came when one of our team members went to a wedding and he saw that you know the wedding was it was filled with flowers and i think uh, as indians we have seen flowers everywhere be it as offerings in temples or decorations and it is an integral part of every indian's life so i think that was where the idea initiated because it uh, sparked the curiosity that what happens to the flowers we generally think of any plant based product as biodegradable and same is the case with flowers so we uh, so we tend to have this association with it that it is not harmful but uh, when we research more about it we learned that that is not the case we found out that uh, these flowers they go into various water bodies and they actually release harmful toxins which can uh, harm the marine life and the environment in general so that sparked the idea that we need to find out a way a method to utilize this floral waste The project has tied up with a couple of temples across Delhi. The team collects around 3 to 400 kilograms of flowers from the temples on a weekly basis and takes them to a production facility which is an NGO. Project Palash has collaborated with several NGOs across Delhi giving employment opportunities to a wide range of people. The first NGO that we collaborated with Palash was the Stop NGO only. So it caters and provides shelter to the victims of human trafficking. And then we have, uh, you know, expanded into diff uh, collaborating with different NGOs or different communities. And uh, as we diversified further, we had many collaborators as well, and we tapped into their market and their human resource as well, uh, uplifting them in turn. So um, if i have to give a number i'd say palash directly employs around 400 to 500 beneficiaries in all its vertical and all its seasonal campaigns throughout the year Though the project has been running since 2019 in the first year the focus was mainly on prototyping various techniques and designs since then project palash has definitely had an impact on the environment Uh, I'd say that uh, we have ca we have a calculated impact uh, in the last year or so of reducing uh, 30,000 kilo of chemical pollution. That is the amount of chemical pollution that we have reduced through us dyeing uh, and offering a substitute to synthetic dyes. Um, other than that, we have salvaged over seven to eight thousand tons of uh, seven to eight thousand kilos of floral waste. So uh, these are the impact metrics. If, if I talk in environmental sense, for Project Palas. Apart from promoting sustainability these young entrepreneurs are also tackling several of the United Nations sustainable development goals starting with the one relating to life under water we aim to improve the life below water improve the life for marine uh, for marine life and basically by utilizing coral reef giving them another life we uh, prevent the chemical toxin from being released there um other fdgs are life on land since we are also reducing pollution on land by uh, not by making sure that the floral waste does not end up in landfills and thus seep into the soil and reduce soil quality other fdg are no poverty in uh, ensuring education and then zero hunger so these are some other fdgs that we are tackling once the floral waste is collected it is segregated the petals are separated and boiled for easy extraction of color The team also uses natural products and fabrics so that the color can last longer. A dye bath is made in which the prepared cloth is dipped. Once dipped, the cloth catches color and is put out to dry in the shade so that the color doesn't fade. Need 
needless to say, Project Palaj has also impacted the personal choices of those associated with it. So throughout my association with this project and in general when I've read about this, I found out that uh, sustainability more than uh, you know more than choice, it is about accessibility. They are offering lots of sustainable choices, and but the main concern remains how accessible are they, and even if they are accessible, if the people to whom they are reaching out to can they afford them? Because sustainability sustainability is generally a bit more expensive than uh, the normal fast fashion brand. So I think that is uh, the main discussion that we need to have: how to make sustainable brand more accessible. I knew about. Um, climate change i knew about the sustainable choices that are there but i did never made any conscious effort toward actually adopting them before i joined this project because once you are associated with such a project and you are actually you know working towards this uh, you start relating to that cause when you put in your manners that cause becomes much more important to you so uh, you know that is something that we uh, need to figure in and that is something that really hit me the most I think that is one of the change, one of the major changes that I have experienced in myself. I've started consciously taking more sustainable choices, more sustainable decisions. It can be something as small as reusing something or buying sustainable clothing. million tons. That is how much floral waste a study estimates is choking and polluting our water bodies and rivers each year. But temple waste isn't just flowers. Often old clothes offered to the gods are also dumped into our rivers, too sacred to be disposed of as garbage. Certain rituals also demand the offering of clothes, milk, flowers by floating them down a river or into a lake. These 8 million tons are killing fish and other water life, creating chaos in a fragile underwater ecosystem and causing enormous water pollution, impacting humans as well. But Nirmala is working hard to protect our rivers and the environment. Formerly known as Recycle Astha, Nirmala was set up by Rajiv Bansal in the year 2020. The brand strives to restore these sacred temple offerings by transforming them into eco-friendly products. In 2019, I visited a temple in a temple, so I saw some flowers from there. I thought it was very good that this is a very social way, that we can offer the God to the next day, and we can dump them in water bodies, or go to the pool. So, it's a great hurt. So, I thought that this is a very good thing. So, I thought that this is a very good thing. So, I thought that this is a very good thing. So, I thought that this is a very good thing. So, I thought that this is a very good thing. So, I thought that this is a very good thing. So, I thought that this is a very good thing. And that's how Nirmala's journey began. In the beginning, it was only about incense sticks made out of flowers. देखिए कि starting में सबसे पहले जब हमने मंदिरों से tie up किया तो सिर्फ flower के बारे में हमने उनसे बात की थी. But लेकिन जब हमने collect करना शुरू किया तो खाली flower नहीं मंदिरों से flower के साथ में प्रसाद, दूध की थैली और भगवान जी के ऊपर चढ़े हुए वस्त्र और बहुत सारी चीजें खंडित मूर्ति बहुत सारी चीजें आती थी तो फिर हमें लगा कि हम खाली फूलों को रिसाइकल क्यों करें जितना निर्माल्य हमें मिल रहा है हम हर एक चीज को रिसाइकल करें। After extensive research and development, they devised a plan to address this waste mismanagement in a more holistic manner. जैसे कि फूलों से हम अगरबत्ती, हवन सामग्री, धूप स्टिक्स ये बनाते हैं और जो भगवान जी के वस्त्र हैं उससे फॉर्चून पोटली एनवलप जो शगन देने के लिए काम आता है और बंदरवाल घर में जो डेकोरेशन के लिए तो जो हमारे मास्टर जी उसकी आरंडी करते हैं जो भी वस्त्रों से बनता है वो हम बनाते हैं दिल्ली में 300 प्लस टेंपल से हमारा कांटेक्ट है सबको हमने अपना नंबर प्रोवाइड किया हुआ और उन सबका नंबर हमारे पास है 
तो जब भी उनको किसी भी चीज़ की रहती है कि ये निर्माल ज़्यादा इकट्ठा हो गया तो वो हमें कलेक्ट करने के लिए कॉल करते हैं तो हमारी गाड़ी जाती है और वहाँ से कलेक्ट करके ले आती है In India, mountains of chunnis and vastras are generously offered to the gods. But what happens to them the next day, or the next week, or the next year? In order to prevent them from ending in landfills or water bodies, Rajiv decided to upcycle the clothes with the assistance of women artisans. कपड़ा मंदिरों से आता है और कभी तो हमारे स्कूलों के साथ में हमारी गाड़ी के अंदर भी आ रहता है। जब बहुत सारा वस्त्र इकट्ठा हो जाता है तो मंदिर वाले स्पेशल हमें कॉल करके बुलाते हैं तो फिर वो पूरा वस्त्र हम वहाँ से लेकर आते हैं उसके बाद में ऊपर लेडीज़ उनकी सेग्रीगेशन करती है कि उसमें से जो वस्त्र बिल्कुल नीट एंड क्लीन है तो मास्टर जी उसको प्रोसेस में लेके लेडीज़ को पूरा उसकी ट्रेनिंग देते हैं और प्रोसेस में लगा के हम उसकी पोटलीज और वो सब चीज़ें बनाते हैं पहले हम देखते थे कि ये सब चीज़ें लैंड के अंदर या वाटर बॉडीज में या कूड़े के ढेर में बाधी जाती थी हम देखते थे कि भगवान पे चढ़ा हुआ निर्माल्य इतना पवित्र है और उसको कूड़े के ढेर में देखना बड़ा दुखदाई होता था बट लेकिन अब दिल को एक सुकून मिलता है कि हाँ अब हम उसको रिसाइकल करके या प्रोडक्ट्स बना रहे हैं री के उसके वो बना रहे हैं तो एक दिल को अच्छा लगता है Using waste as a resource, saving life under water, and promoting sustainability by empowering artisans is how Bagia, Project Palash, and Nirmalek are creating clothes with a conscience. Now you know how to make the best out of waste, and it's not so hard. <laughs>